بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هالو ان ويلكم تو فوتي جاج مو بيبول مانشستر يونايتد شي هاوس ذير واي اجين تو وان بوينت اجين اتس اجين اند اجين اند اجين اند اجين ابسولوتلي ابيزمال اند تيربل بيرفورمانس باي مانشستر يونايتد اجين لوكي بينالتي اند ا بينالتي نوت جيفن فور بورنموث اي ابسولوتلي ثوت اي ووز ا ديفينيت بينالتي دي جاست وان ا بيلد ام اوت They just want to build him out. The referee, the referee was shocking in my opinion. The penalty for Bournemouth, I didn't think it was that clear and cut penalty, but I seen them give him. But that other penalty though, for, for, for Bournemouth, come on. It's very obvious. It continued inside the penalty area. Yes, the contact initiated outside, but the law are always, always, always clear. If the contact continues inside, you give a penalty. That was an absolute robbery, to be honest. Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> Mr. Who We Are, it's who we are, mate. Got absolutely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed by Newcastle, by Eddie Howe. High line, ahead of the halfway line. I've never seen this in football in my life. Other than amateur teams, never ever in my life i've seen a coach telling his players to have a high line ahead of the halfway line there is no offside does he know the rules does he really know the rules does he know the rules that is it's embarrassing it is absolutely humiliating for the tottenham hotspur community for their fans they don't know where to hide and last but not least Jeremy Doku, people. Jeremy Doku. Jeremy Doku arrived again in the Premier League. What a performance by Jeremy Doku. Clear message. Clear message by Manchester City that goal difference or not goal difference were here to win and win emphatically by the squad. Rotated heavily, but still emphatic win. Sending a clear message, top of the table by Manchester City. Sending a clear message to the Liverpools, the Arsenals, that we are here to stay. You aren't going to get anything easy. It isn't going to be easy for you to win the Premier League. And for everybody that is saying it's just Luton. I've seen it on Twitter. Watch the performance. Watch the rotation. Watch the Julian Alvarez. The Matias Nunes, yes, they, they conceded the goal, but the game was over and you know it. You know it. But I'm here with a brilliant panel. Will Stewart, of course, he was on the thumbnail before and he couldn't make it for personal reasons. He sent me a text about an hour ago saying that he has personal reasons. I'm going to cut him some slack. Of course, the benefit of the doubt. Will will be here one day, though. It might be the day that Spurs win. It might be. We never know. But listen, people, I'm here with a fantastic panel. If you're here now, you know the drill. We have over 200 people and we haven't even hit three-minute mark. So you hit that like button now. It helps the channel massively. Hit that like button now. And if you're watching this on the replay, hit that like button. We're going to get a discussion. We're going to discuss Man United, Spurs, and Manchester City, of course. And if you're watching this on the replay, you know the target. Let's get to 300, 400 likes live on the air, of course. And I'm here with Kate, the brilliant Kate, of course. A couple of episodes with me on Straight Facts. Absolutely controversial, but not controversial, Kate, of course, sometimes. <laughs> cooks her own team. Michael Griggs. If you haven't watched Michael Griggs' match reaction, hit there now. Cooked his team. Cooked his teams. Cooked his coach. And, of course... The always, always smiling, always fending for his club. Vator is here with me. Absolutely brilliant panel. And there's only one place to start, in my opinion, which is the latest game that we just played, to be honest. Manchester United. What are we guys thinking? What are we, going, are we th thinking, people? Manchester, I, I don't know what to say, Griggs. Uh, I don't know. I'll let the title of my video do the talking. The same old. It's the same old performance every week. No, nothing different. 
It's like, bro, it's like watching a re- it's like watching the same movie about a hundred times. You just replay it, it's on repeat every single time. So like, you know, you know that you know when you have this one song, right? That you just want to listen to, you have it you have it repeating on Spotify. That's United. Except it's not a good song, it's a trash song. That's what it is. Like, it's like you're in depression and you just got you just watch United. It doesn't carry it. You're just watching it. It's like I'd rather watch paint and dry because it's the same old coaching mistakes, it's the same old player mistakes, it's a combination, it's a mesh of both. One one group sucks, the other group sucks as well. And Bournemouth with a better team. I expected that because Iraola is a better coach than Eric Ten Hag. You see the pressing structure, you see the difference. One team you had a uh, press a coherent side, and the other team was pressing, just running because they wanted to get their cardio done for the day. Like on a tread instead of a treadmill, you had on the football pitch. That's what it was. Um Casemiro, Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia, by the way. I am praying. Forget about the Muhammad Salah bid that they're trying to they're trying to launch up. I am begging. I am begging. I will go to Saturday Raven myself and beg. Please sign Casemiro for my football club. I'll take 40 mil. I'll take 35 at this point. I'm lowering the price every single day. By the end of the season, I might be willing to let him go on a free. I might be willing to let him go on a free. You might we might have to come to that. Because he bro, he does I don't I saw Casemiro today overlap for a Wamba soccer pass. That's what I saw today. Casemiro doing an overlap. In what world should Casemiro be doing an overlap? There was a point where Harry Maguire was in Bournemouth's half and he was looking to break the line. And Casemiro was standing on the edge of the box, just for the sake of it. Go help your go help your center back out. Go receive the ball. What are you doing over there, Garnacho? He got hooked rightfully so. He was terrible. Every I, I don't understand why a right footed winger that's playing on the right is cutting inside on his left foot when that's not your when that's, when that's not your nominated foot. You, as a right winger on the right on the right hand side, you should be going down the touch line. When Doku plays on the right hand side for City, he doesn't cut it all the time. He goes down the touch line. He tries to play the ball into the box. You're going to you're right-footed. Go down the byline. I don't know who Bournemouth's left back is. I mean, actually, I do. It's Kirk has, but, like, still, try, try to do something. Hoyland, stop trying to move like Jack Swagger. Everyday wrestling. This, this is not WWE. WrestleMania was last week. We moved on from WrestleMania. It's a Premier League. Try to do something. I know he's a young striker. He's raw. I have, I have, I have hope for him. But when you look at the other team striker, Dom Solanke, who I'm very high on, to be fair, you look at the difference between the two strikers, it's night and day. The one that should look like the 70 mil that was spent on is Dom Solanke. And the one that looks like a, a perceived Liverpool and uh, Chelsea reject, and Dom Solanke, look like Hoyland. There was levels between the two. And I know Solanke's a little bit older, but you should not be looking that drastically inferior to a striker. It was night and day between them. Kwambala, he got cooked. I, 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 I tweeted it this morning. I'm like, you're going to get your welcome to the Premier League moment by Dom Solanke. And that happened. He got caught on the wrong foot. He fell to the ground. You got to hold that sometimes, you know, as a rookie. That's your, that's your learning lesson. We all have those, right? So Dalo, he looks tired. My team looks tired. My team looks terrible. All I have is the FA Cup to hope for. But at the end of the day, do I really have any hope for the FA Cup? Not really. Because at the end of the day, I know I'm going to face I'm gonna face Vader's team in the FA Cup final. And I'm going to have a repeat of last year, most likely. The only difference is I don't have David De Gea throwing the ball into his own net. It might be Andre Onana. I don't know who it's going to be this time. So... It's just I'm waiting for the season to end. I'm ho- I'm waiting for all these appointments to happen. I'm hoping that there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's all I'm hoping for. But in terms of the Premier League season, yeah, Spurs lost points today, right? Maybe we had a chance to capitalize and do something. But I woke I found out that Newcastle jumped me in the table. I didn't even know that happened. They jumped me in the table. So I was thinking about I'm gonna be singing whoa, whoa ball about Europa League. I'm gonna be singing conference league. They don't have a theme song, they use the Europa League theme song. So instead of me visiting Ireland and them countries, I'm gonna be visiting Malta and Kazakhstan. I told the boys, it's clip, we're going to we're going to Kazakhstan, get the Canada goose jackets ready. It's brick over there, it's cold in the Eastern Europe. It ain't warm over there. It's not like France, Belgium. It's not the warm. We're, we're going to the cold. Get the get the jackets ready. So yeah, you know, you know, you know what, you know what, Greg? Here's the problem. You're gonna face Sheffield United and you're gonna face Burnley and you're gonna face Crystal Palace, and the winds are coming, and you know what's coming, right? Was Eric Ten Hag fixed it. He ain't fixed nothing. He he took a wrench. He thought he fixed it. And in the next game, the pipe is gonna break all over again, and the water is gonna splash out. That's what's gonna happen, man. He ain't fixing nothing, man. Some fake construction workers. That's what he I, is. I, I've known if, if 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 Kate and, and Vitor watched the game, but bro, Manchester United had zero control about where they are on the pitch. Zilch, mm. absolutely, bro. Like you watching the coaching of Manchester United. And listen, I, I've seen Saeed's tweet, to be honest. I genuinely think Manchester United are the worst coach team in the Premier League. Europe. Like, Europe. I've never seen 
bro, I've lived in the 90s and the 2000s. And I've, Luis Van Hal, Oli, Mourinho, it didn't matter, bro. This Manchester United is, bro, this is League One coach. It's, bro, <laughs> mo, mo, mo. Vitor, Vitor, there was some point, and I'm sorry, and I'm going to say this. I'm Egyptian, but I've lived in America for 11 years. These people don't know. Griggs know that. In America, in high school sometimes, they play football with something called the early 90s of English football. It's called kick and run. Griggs know that, that statement. Victor, you know that. You know kick and run? Kick it to the channels and let the players run. Kick it long, hoping for the forwards to get something. Manchester United at some point today played kick and run. Let's hope that someone catches the ball. Let's hope that I swear, bro. I saw Casemiro launch it to Bruno. Yeah, that's what bro, I saw. To the point, to the point, right? And, and it's not about soccer. Soccer is just another. And for people that try to be xenophobic, forget xenophobia. I don't care about xenophobia, right? For the people that say so soccer is just another word, like football in Germany or whatever. But the re sometimes in America, the lower divisions team they play kick and run. You guys yeah. know what kick and run is. Yeah. No structure. Whoever gets the ball, let's kick it forward, hoping that someone will fight physicality and get something. Yeah. Literally. Literally, that happened today. Eric Ten Hag on the sideline, I don't know what he's doing, bro. He's watching like me. It's ridiculous. Now, see, uh, listen, I, I understand Griggs being frustrated because he's seen the pinnacle of United. He's He's got that standard for him. He closes his eyes. He thinks of Manchester United, and all he sees is Sir Alex Ferguson. That's the football that he continues to see when he closes his eyes. And he's like, I don't recognize what I'm looking at. Mo, I think you're doing a huge disservice to Eric Ten Hag. I know he's having a poor season this year. I know. But I, I, I can close my eyes, and I remember United fans praising this man year one. I remember him doing what he had to do with what he had at his disposal. Year one, they were talking about, listen, we can build off of it. Now, he's fallen back. He's having a terrible season. He's looking like he can't be that guy. But you can't look at year one and now take year two and say this is a year two man. You can't say that this is who he is. For him to not have any coaching style, any ability, how's he undefeated against Klopp? How's he not suffered a loss versus Klopp this season with this unorganized, unprepared, no structure to his game? How is how has he done this to the might the the great Klopp? How's he done this? I want to point out, United are poor. They're very poor. They're bad, right? Eric Ten Hag should not be making any player decisions. From what I understand, listening to United fans, a DOF is coming in, things all behind the boardroom, everything's changing for him just to be a coach manager. That's what he needs to be. Now, you guys want him out? Who am I going to say? Who am I going to say as a City fan that you guys shouldn't have want him out? But I just find it comical that he was praised so highly last year, and now he needs to get out of there. Just make him be a coach manager and see what he does year three. I think... I think this is a poor game. It's a comical game. I'm going to cook Staffy on Monday. But Bournemouth, they're, they're, be, they're poor in the standings, but they've been a good side. At home, they've been a good side. Mo, you know this. You watch a lot of football. I, I'm assuming the panelists as well. Maybe we don't pay that much attention to the Cherries, but they've had a very good run at home. And what I love about this league this season is you can't just look at the standings and say, oh, it's going to be Chelsea, it's going to be Liverpool, it's going to be Arsenal, it's going to be City, it's going to be United. You can't do that anymore. Now you're looking at the top scorers and you're looking at Watkins, you're looking at Isak, you're looking at, dare I say, Solanke. You're looking at players that are stepping up. Like, this league's changed. We can't just go and say it should be the same old, same old. Now, huh. Eric Ten Hag's going to figure this out. He's going to fix it. Listen, it's, it's easy fixtures coming up. That's this gaslighting no, session no. is crazy. I'm saying he's going to fix it in terms of he's going to be playing better than the teams uh, ahead of him. Well, he, now, this is a poor result. Guess what? I lost on I lost on XG to Sheffield and Burnley already this year. So what what is he going to do against those teams? I I, I don't know. I don't Victor, know. I can't tell if you're sarcastic or you're real. Exactly. <laughs> can can well, someone can't, tell? You can't gaslight me. Bad, guys, do you guys think Victor is 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 serious? Does anybody think Victor is serious? You aren't serious, are you? I have a serious face on. What do you mean? 
You are so not being serious. Yo, stick to the city underdog against Luton gimmick. Don't no, do this gaslight. I'll, 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 I'll talk about city later. Don't, don't gaslight me, bro. But, this team but, is shit. And, bro, okay, but Griggs, the thing Griggs. about the old days with Ten Hawk last year, the thing about the old days is they're the old days. I don't care about what he did last year. I care about what I'm seeing right now. And he is by far the worst coach in the Premier League. Bro, today I had the, the worst coach in the Premier League beat Klopp or didn't lose to Klopp three times. That's a Klopp issue. I don't care about what you're in Klopp does. I had Frank the board cook my team today. Frank the board, who was by far statistically the worst Premier League manager ever, he was able to cook Ten Hawk today, and he was right. So that's a, was... that's where I fall into. I'm getting cooked by Frank the board. That's where I fall. Bro, jo- Jose Mourinho had a whole press conference dedicated to cooking Frank the board, and now Frank the board is the one doing the cooking. So I went from being the cooker. To the one getting chefed up. That's the issue. I, uh, The last thing I'm going to say is United, in terms of the standings, they deserve to be where they're at. If you look no, at the don't. standings. They yes, they do. Lower. No, they, they don't. Lower. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They have to be lower. I'm sorry. They have to be lower. Then who gets credit for them being higher than they should be? The players. Some of the they're players. The one- 100% debater. All right. Who gets, who, who's faulted for today? Players or managers? Both. Okay, then that's what it is. Listen, the manager needs to step up. Better players need to come in. Too much crashing happens on Eric Ted Hogg, in my opinion. Where you, I think where you guys are in the standings, you deserve to be there. But hey, I've spoken. I've spoken enough. You guys, you guys think I'm not being fans, serious? I have fans chanting, "Keep Eric Ten Hogg for ten more years" from rival fans. You know what that tells me? That means they don't rate him. That means he's not rated. That means that they want him to say so, so he could cause every more suffering. They weren't saying that's that. What, were they saying that last season? No, they're saying that this year. Actually, I think Liverpool fans were probably saying that when they beat us. Yeah, Liverpool them. fans wanted him, and now now Liverpool fans don't want to face Ted Hogg. Remember that. Last year, they were praising 7-up. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, now, that's their issue, that's bro. That's a, that's a, no, that's a Liverpool issue. Is there bro. any Liverpool fan laughing at Ten Hogg this season? No, because no, they, they, they don't have the right to, but 18 other teams are laughing at him. So just because one's not laughing at him, don't mean the other 18 ain't laughing at him. Kate is laughing at him because he because they took four points off me. Mo's laughing at him, and he's not even a – he's just unusual in the Premier League. No, it's a You're joke. laughing at him. It's a joke, bro. It's a joke. All right. Bro, All right. forget that. We'll come to the players, but this is a joke, Vater. Bro, the guy on the pitch, no structure. But there was one play. There was five players in the space of 10 feet around each other in the midfield. It was Diego Dallo, Kobe Meno, Casemiro, Bruno, right? And and uh, I think it was uh, uh, not the players all to of that, them Mo. in ten feet. But he's not telling them to do that. That's not it's definitely that... he is. <laughs> oh, well, well, they, well, they just ignore their manager's instruction and then they just go on the pitch and do whatever they want. Is that what we're doing? So they're they're being uh, yeah, they're being rogues. They're being mavericks, renegades. They're not following. Give it, it up, bro. Give it there's up. No this ain't way, a movie, there's man. no way that he's telling them to be that close, all pulled up. We see that in in kids' football. Kids football, they move like a school of fish wherever uh, the ball goes. He's Mo not mentioned high school. Po- Ma- Mo mentioned high school soccer, right? I played a little bit. I had a better coach for high school soccer than I had than I seen with Eric Ten Hag. There was more compactness back then, about six years ago when I was in high school, than there is now with United. But I look at United, I just I don't see a football team. I see eleven individuals that just go on the pitch, and th- you know you know when they say you you want to be a fly in the wall in a certain room. I want to be a fly on the wall in the United yes. Coaches room. Yes, they talk there needs about to be a documentary. Tactics. Documentary on this season. I would. I agree. To that. There needs to be. A, I want to see what Eric Ten Hag is cooking up in the coaches' yeah. room when he's watching the tape and they're and they're discussing the tactics. I want to see. Because yeah, what I'm thinking that. is that they're playing poker in there and they're not doing anything talking about tactics. That they're playing with chips and stuff okay. like that. City City just dropped the together trouble. We need to have the separated, separated. What did you, you guys separated top six? Something, something for you guys. We need to see the behind the scenes of United. That would be absolutely epic. Um, make that happen, Griggs. Make that happen. Yeah, I'll okay. get on the phone with Netflix. Manchester United. Guys, over 500 of you here. Let's get the likes up to 300. Guys, hit that like button, people. It's simple. It doesn't cost you a penny to like the video, guys. It's already heated from the first, like, 10 minutes. I, I don't know what to say about Ten Hag. Okay. Were you, were you, like, a little bit scared of Man United catching up to Spurs? No, um, no, I wasn't. The thing was, right, when Tin Hag was at Ajax and we was looking for a manager, I really wanted him. I thought, you know, he was a fantastic manager. And you don't become a bad manager overnight. I truly believe that. However, I don't understand why he's come to Man United and dropped the philosophy of how he played at Ajax to just 
it, I mean, has he even got a style of play at United? Because it, it's kind of shambolic. You never know what you're going to get. Um, so I, I don't I don't really understand what's gone wrong. For me, if the Ten Hag from Ajax came to the Premier League, I, I really thought he would do well at United. But every week I watch United and I, I, I can't believe it's Manchester United that I'm seeing. When I think of the, the the games, I mean, I remember going to Spurs, Man United, when we were 3-0 up and ended up losing 5-3. Beckham come on and absolutely tore us to pieces. You know, Man United used to be a terrifying place to go to. No one fears Man United anymore. It's like, and, and for that, I, I've got, you know, the players, I don't think most of your players are good enough, but some of it's got to go on the manager. And I just don't see why he's... He's not come along and, and tried to sort of do what he did at Ajax. He's gone completely the other way. If I was a United fan, I would be screaming for him to get out of my club. But as a rival, I hope he stays there forever. Um, the problem is, you know, who, who are you going to get next year, Grand Potter? Yeah. On my, li- on my life, he's a better coach than Eric Ten Hag. Oh. On my life, he's a better coach than Eric You guys, Ten Hag. seriously, Manchester life. United are going to get uh, Grand Potter. It's going to be the same, bro. Bro, it's gonna be. Uh, it can't. It can't be worse than this. I it, it actually can't be worse can, than this. I promise. Wait, no, 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 no. Mo, you know why? Mo, you know why? Because I'm 17th on expected points. I'm 17th on expected points in the Premier League. You remember, Mo. Peter? This is the answer. Do you remember this, guys? Hear this from Michael Griggs again. Say that again, Michael. Well, it, it genuinely cannot get worse with this from a performance-wise. Man United. I am 17th on expected points. I am battling with Sheffield and Burnley on expected points. I can't even name you six. Man United three. should be 17th on the table. I, exactly. 17, 16, somewhere uh-huh. around there. I know it's 16th and below, though. Listen, l- hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel like I'm in the Matrix right now, and I just saw a black <laughs> cat go in front of me. This is deja vu all the time. No, this, no, 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 no. I, I have no, never been this bad. I have no, never been this okay, bad. Okay, okay. I, I, I keep hearing, I keep hearing, I don't know the style of play. Is this not on repeat when Ollie was the manager? Yeah, 100%. No, at least not, it cannot no, get any worse bro. than this. It cannot get any worse than this. I'll no. take whatever manager other than Ollie. I've heard oh, this. I, I, I got Guess what? You know what United play like? You know when you're playing FIFA, right? And your little brother steals the controller from you and he's just doing whatever? That's what it feels like I'm playing. It's like I, I, I let a little kid take over the tactics and he's the one choosing the plays. He's the one that's choosing the system. That's what it feels like. Not a, not a, six, not a six-year-old Dutch man. From Ajax, bro. I never want to deal with Ajax. My, 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 again. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna genuinely ask the panel and the and the people in the chat a question. Go ahead. Why are Man United fans not accepting this is a banter era, again and again and again? They believe, and I said that many times. They believe they deserve something. It's just a banter era. You have to live with it. You have to live with it. This I is it. it. You have you have Bruno Fernandez. You have Garnacho. You have Casemiro. You have Harry Maguire starting, Marcus Rashford. It's just a banter, Juan Bissaka. It's just a banter era. And it can, it will continue. Uh, no, nah, not really. It could always end. All right, all, we all thought Arsenal's banter era was going to continue. Not with Graham Potter, though. Not with Graham Potter. Not with his name now. I'll tell you what. I'll what tell about you what. Experience. From experience here. From experience. From experience. From experience. I'm going to mention a couple of things. Inter. Until we got someone like Antonio Conti and we spent 200 million, and we got plenty of players and a, a manager to make a, a man out of these guys at the club. And Liverpool, Liverpool thought when they signed Ricky Lambert, Mario Balotelli, then all these guys, right? That, oh my God, we're back. Until you, you get a decent players, until you get players that care, bro, they don't care. I promise. I agree with that. Them don't and the only them. reason, by the way, by the way, if this was still like the, if it was going to be the same board in charge and all that kind of stuff, right? Like they just don't making football decisions. I'd agree with you. I, I don't. I wouldn't think that there's an end to this banter era, as we say, right? Because it is a banter era. You're right. At the end of the day, it is a banter era. Yeah, we've won a couple cups in between it, but it's not cups that not mean anything to me. Other than the one FA Cup that we won in under Van Hal. Europa League, okay, it was a nice little, maybe nice to win, but then it moved me. Carabao Cup, nice on the day, but a couple weeks after, it don't move you no more. Now, it's the fact that there's a new group of people that are coming in to make decisions that make you, as a United fans, believe that maybe there can be change. Well, is it is it a, a certainty that there will be change? Absolutely not, because these guys might make a, might end up making the wrong decisions. That is that is within the possibility. But I have the hope, it's, it's hopium, that these guys will make the right decisions and we go from there. Because I can't be looking at them be expecting the worst, because if I expect the worst, then that's just going to drive me insane. So I'm going to trust that it can get better. Because I always think of you, I always view football as this it's cyclical, right? Every club has their cycle with yeah. their shit. United have, are going through it right now. Liverpool went through it. 
in the 2000s and the two and most of the two, in the middle of the 2010s. Vader went through it for about like 40 years. Kate is going. To, Kate is. Kate's been through going it through it for about 40. <laughs> yeah, so we all got it. Mo, you just went through yours, right? Until Antonio Conte, you talked about it. Until Antonio Conte came, and for me, it's been 10 years, and it might end up being 15. It could be 20. It could be 30. Bro, I might see United win, never win the league again, right? It's possible. I haven't seen my American sport teams win in a minute, so it's all possible. But I'm just gonna hope that with new people in charge, that they that that look like proper football men. I'm expecting a guy that came from Manchester City that we all talk about is the model football club these days in terms of the board and all that kind of stuff. That he will help Dan Ashworth that's gotten bigged up. Uh, Jason Wilcox from the City Academy and what he did over there. I'm expecting and hoping that these guys can bring life. I'm like. I'm, one thing I'll say, United will never be the United of old ever again. That will never happen again. That was once in a lifetime dominance. It's never happening again. You're not. You're never having another Sir Alex Ferguson ever. The only thing I can hope for is that it could be sort of like Liverpool, compete for the Premier League most years, win the Premier League maybe once every five years, win the Champions League maybe once every ten years. That's what I can. That's the most I can hope for. I just want to hope that we're competing for the biggest of, of trophies every single year. I'm not expecting to win them every year. But I just want to compete. I don't want to be an afterthought because United for the past 10 years have been an afterthought every single year. Even when we finished second, we're, we were miles off Manchester City. It was an afterthought. We were, we were just the best of the rest. I don't want to be the best of the rest. I want to be actually competing. I want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vader. Maybe he'll, he'll land some punches. I want to land some punches back because for the past 10 years, it's been knockout after knockout after knockout. Every single round, 10 rounds, he's winning on the scorecard 30-26. That's what it's been like. So I want to I want to even the score a little bit, and that's what I hope that United, the new ownership group, group does personally. I don't think it's gonna change, but listen, Manchester United abysmal. I think you'll finish eighth this season. Is my expectation? Wow. I actually think you'll finish eighth. No, this season. no Malta for me, man. Let's go. I don't want to travel over there. Yeah, yeah. I ain't trying to go to Malta. Yeah. It's brilliant. Listen, moving on to Spurs. Embarrassing again. Uh, four nil. You literally. Like there is, there are no words to describe that performance. Um, Timo Werner, wow, what a football player, Timo Werner. Brennan Johnson. Um, to be honest, like this first team, and I'm not gonna put it on the players completely, but I'm gonna put it on the manager this time. Attacking football, and Hossam warned us. Attacking football, looking good, and everything. Tactically, defensively, the guy somehow doesn't coach them defensively. He relies on individual ability, speed, aggress aggression, and everything. But I don't think that this is not sustainable, in my opinion. It's not. Um, listen, everyone who wanted and in the Premier League, I knew nothing about this guy. Um, I looked into him when he was linked to us. I didn't want him. I didn't want anyone to come from Scotland to be our manager. But, you know, I was told by a lot of people, this guy is really good and he's going to bring attacking football. Now those same people that have told me this and how wonderful it is are crying that this guy is naive and that he's got a suicidal tactics and the high line won't work. But this guy's never going to change. He's, he's played this way of where he's gone. He's been a manager for 30 years. Um, he's not going to change. You know, people can scream about it, but it, it isn't going to happen. Um, I, I think a massive amount of the blame today has got to go on the players. They were all, There wasn't a single player that played well today, Mo. There really wasn't. Not one. I mean, even our captain, Sonny, who very rarely gets criticised because... He's classed as a bit of a Tottenham legend. And, you know, m people like Will, I've never really had Will criticise Sonny. He's just one of many because it's him and Son and he's Mr Spurs. He was dreadful. He was invisible today. You know, for me, there was absolutely no player that shone himself in glory. We were completely outplayed. You know, we, we started off a little bit cautiously. They got those two goals and we just basically gave up. It was it was horrendous to watch. The worst performance I've seen from Spurs for a hell of a long time. But I don't think it's fair that it always falls on the manager. You know, Angie's going to play this way no matter what. I just think if he needs to play this way, if he wants to play this way, we need to get better personnel to execute the system because that's... Most of our players ain't good enough. We haven't got a midfield general. We've got Basuma who disappears. He's absolutely useless. Um, I'd have a Zuba Mendy in there. You've got Madison who's bang out of form and who plays well 
when Basuma plays well. And now Basuma's gone off the mark. Matters has dropped off. You've got the likes of, you know, even the likes of Udogi and Porro. They know guaranteed they're going to start every week because we've got no one to, to put in their place. We've got Emerson Royale. Bloody hell. We've got Ben Davis still sitting on the bench. There's no... There's no competition for places. And the front three, like you say, Sonny isn't that attacker that's going to get you 40 goals, um, 30 goals even a season. Like when Ange was at Celtic, he had Kyogo, who used to knock him in for fun. We haven't got that attacking option. And our wingers, they don't have that sort of cut and curl ball that they put in. So there's so much work to be done. But we are only 10 months into the project you know, Arteta finished eighth in his first two seasons. I think Ange gets criticised a lot because he's adamant and he's set in his ways. But would I rather have a manager that's adamant, set in his ways with a clear philosophy than a ten hog that has no philosophy? Yes, I would. And I'd much rather sit and watch. But what is philosophy going to get? What is this philosophy going to get you? Yeah, but when I believe, I truly believe, when he gets the players in that he wants. It will work. I mean, he's not rigid in the fact that he doesn't tweak it slightly, but he just, you've got to remember we had Conte last year where we played defence all season. It was horrendous. And now, all of a sudden, our fans, I mean, the, the meltdown has been monumental today. Our fans are calling for us to go back to playing that way. And it's like, hang on a minute, what actually do you want? For me, you've got to give this guy the summer window, you've got to give him next, um, the winter window again and see. But again, it's gonna it's gonna land on the board if they're gonna back this guy. I, I I do believe. I'm not saying that. You know, it is suicidal in a way because I still don't think the players know it, and I still don't think the players are good enough. But he isn't gonna change. So you either accept it as a Spurs fan and hope he get backed and we get the players in, or you're gonna just be disappointed because we're gonna get losses like this. I mean, we've got Arsenal in two weeks, which I'm going to. But um, that should be interesting. We've got Liverpool still to come. We've got City still to come. If you if you play like Ange does, you you normally we we normally score a lot, like goals. This is only the second time in forty three games we haven't scored a goal, but we do let in loads of goals. It's just the way he plays. Yeah, i I think I think the ex I think the criticism of Ange is over the top for a first year manager. I think it's way over the top. I've I actually like his approach as a as a year one manager to be very stern and to say this is my approach, and then I'll adjust further in the second season. I I can understand highly, and I'm just going to revert revert to how my manager coming in was spoken about. Year one, they kept saying this pet ball is not going to work. This playing out of the back isn't going to work. We suffered a terrible loss to Leicester, and they wanted to like say that Pep is done, it's never going to happen. And he fixed it, obviously, year two, because year two was an amazing Centurion season. But you want a manager to see whether the players can do what's asked of them. And when you look at this game today, Van der Ven, do you need to change your boots? You need, Or you need to change your contacts because something's got, you got vertigo, you couldn't keep your balance. He looked horrible, and that cost two those two goals. And when you, when you suffer those two goals, obviously your game plan is going to change. You got you have to open up even further to try to get back into the game. I'm not blaming this on Ange, and I think when he gets his players season two, when the players know the system even better, they're going to be better suited. Look, he I believe completely tied, maybe one goal differential off of Unai Emery, and Unai Emery is getting talked about in terms of how well he's got Aston Villa performing. And you want to talk about how open Spurs are. I, I think it's an over-exaggeration. Um, I think they've, maybe for the fan base, believe that they've over-exceeded or where they're at. I, I'm not too sure. But yeah. this is this is a, I think this is great with the remaining games for what they can do moving forward. Now, do, hey, ruin the party for Arsenal. Ruin the party for Liverpool. Do what you got to do. But... This season in particular, this is a year one for a manager. This isn't, I don't think you can beat him with a stick and say he's never going to be successful or he won't even bring this team um, to threaten for Hold on, you think uh, this first team can stop Arsenal? I think they can get a result. I don't know if they can necessarily win the game, but I think they can cause Arsenal draw points. I you think, think with the high line and the forward line that Spurs have, they can actually get a point against Arsenal? We drew 3-3 at their place. It's different. It's the beginning of the season. What 
What? It's getting worse for you, Kate. It's getting worse for us, but when it comes to it a derby, derby especially a North yeah. London derby, form yeah. means absolutely nothing. It all goes so out the, the window. So, so you're relying on intangibles, not football. We just saw United get a result versus Liverpool, which are intangibles. Like, it happens. This is a derby. It's going to be incredible. Now, would I place my house on it? <laughs> no. But <laughs> we, know, we, know that, we know that it's going to be a tough game because of Spurs and Arsenal. It, it always is. Now, I don't think Ange plays the same style as well. This is the thing that kind of gets too generalized. He's actually conceded his back line at times. He's actually not had them so advanced forward. But player individual player errors have been costly, and then the, he gets painted with this brush. Oh, he needs to. What the errors are you guys talking about? Van der Ven slipped like he was playing on ice today. He lost his positional awareness, and he caused the two goals. He was at fault for those two goals. You now think, I know you think Vator that a pl the problem is you 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 uh, you support Manchester City. You why think, is that a problem? Why is that I'll a problem? tell you the difference. You think that Van der Ven should be in that position? Well, you think he you, should be babied. And you should think be Van der Ven for... should be chasing Alexander Isak for 50 yards and trying to get... You think Van der Ven should not be going full on for the Ant Anthony Gordon goal? You think that's positional problem or you think that's coaching problem? That no, it put I, him in I, that I, position to recover for the majority of the game? I think I think in that instance, the player's got to be alert. I, I you You mentioned it. You mentioned it, City. We often are de defending one v one. Like we'll and have. We, a we, I, I say the coach is, is is wrong in this. No, I well, this is where I disagree, and I know you got your Italian football, so it's a little more, you know, a little more respected in terms of how many defenders. Oh, forget about Italian after. football. I got balanced football. It's called balanced football. Well, in balanced football, if you have one player versus another player, that's balanced. If you need two defenders versus one attacker, I don't really call that balanced. Now, Liverpool do this. City do this. Spurs do this. It's situational. It's being aware. Now, did he did he get caught with the ball getting behind and Isak being able to run downhill? Yes. But I don't think that's completely on a system. I think that's a player not being alert. Now, also... Van de Ven was ahead of the halfway line, Vater. I know, but that's him not being dialed in to realizing that he's got a striker. Yeah, but we have seen this even without... Okay, here's the problem. We have seen this without Van de Ven being on the pitch. We have seen this happen with Emerson Real and Ben Davis playing in the back line. That means it's a system problem. It isn't a personnel problem. Am I wrong? No, I think you're wrong. I think there's no there's no manager that's telling that's telling the last remaining defender to be that far away from a from an attacking player. Well, we saw yeah. them play a high line. We, we saw them play a high line with nine men. There, there is what no are we end. talking there, about? Yeah, but that's why he tells players to play a high line. Van der Ven or not Van der Ven, he tells got... all his players to play that high of a line. No, because he, he would be the first to admit, if you're given instructions, there's still that intelligence to know, no, someone's creeping behind me. One man needs to be remained back. Now, I've seen it, and I brought up the example of when it was City. Pep's in introducing in instructions, but it's not to be followed to a T. There's situations when you need to be alert. I think the players are still trying to figure that out. Now, Van der Ven, again, even with him getting back in position, stay on your feet. Make Isak have to choose where to go. But he slipped up because he lost his head, and Isak had his choice on which which post to shoot at, and he did that twice. I don't think it's necessarily falls on the system. I'm not taking the blame from Van der Ven completely. He slipped and he got cooked by the dribble. He didn't hold his feet, but he had to recover fifty yards, people. Sprinting fifty yards. It's a system it's issue. issue. I so hold on, hold no, hold on, no, Griggs. One second. So Mo, seeing that situation, what are you telling Van der Ven to do before that ball's kicked to go behind? You're telling him to be in his own end. I'm telling the line to be a little bit behind, not leaving one and one out of the halfway line. All right. What? All right. English Are you football. serious? English Kate, football. you're a Spurs fan. Kate, please help me here. You think... You <laughs> what, are think, you tagging in, Kate? No, there's no tagging. I'm definitely she's a Spurs fan. You think it's <laughs> right to tell the players to play that high of a line with someone like Isaac, Anthony Gordon, and Harvey Barnes running at the defense like this? You think Look, that's okay to do in football? Look, it, this is how he plays. I, I'm not saying whether it's right. It, and with, Kate, when you're playing against... Can I Kate, stop. I know that you say this is how he plays, but we're trying to analyze how he plays. I want to, Is it right or wrong? 
Don't tell Look, me this is you, how he plays. He's Greek, when, man. He's stubborn. This is, when he's you not play against the team whose main threat is their pace up front, then it, it's it's suicidal to do what he did That's today. It. Thank you so much. But he is always going to do it. So he's That's wrong. The thing. So he's wrong, and he's going to still play the wrong way. No, now, because is, I don't. I think he will be right if he gets the, the correct personnel in. Fast, I just don't who's think fast, he's fast, Van der Ven is the fastest guy in, in the Premier League. Oh yeah, well, yeah, no, Van der Ven. Yeah, Van der Ven is the fastest guy in the Premier League. Yeah, 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 yeah,
What concerns me the most is every every game that we play, like today, we have 73% possession to their 27, but we're just doing nothing with it. That's that's the most concerning thing for me. It's just we're passing it around, but we're not doing anything. Yeah. You know, our midfield's not right and our front three's not right. I'm that's got to be game. addressed. Yep. Given this summer window, if next if this time next year we're sitting here, I will be sitting here saying, no, this guy, you know, isn't going to work. But I'm not going to throw him under the bus. He's won wherever he's gone. No, he hasn't won a European trophy. But, you know, this is his chance and we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Saad wants to say something. I don't know. Like, Saad wants to say Hello, something. Guys. Hello, guys. Arsenal, Saad. Can you guys, fraud, can you guys hear me properly? Oh, no, can't hear you. No, turn it up. You can definitely hear me. You can definitely yeah, hear me. Fine. There you Give are. There you are. Um, I wanted to come on here because I wanted to speak to Vader. Vader, with all due respect, my brother, you're talking out of your, your backside about Ten Hag is not the issue. Ten Hag is the serious issue. Ten Hag has the, the IQ, the footballing IQ of a 10-year-old. I have gone to Sunday League in England and seen better better formed team in regards to defensively setting themselves as compact as they can be. Were, were you saying that last season? And form a, for, forming an attack. The fact that you said that it's not all Ten Hag, 100% is Ten Hag. 100%. Were, were you saying all this last season? Vita, it doesn't matter about last season. Last season was a fluke. Last season he happened to Why get... Why isn't this season a fluke, football. you fraud? Okay, so last season was a fluke. Because there's more evidence last than this season, season last year. Last season he came in, he was like, right, let me let me just let me just try and 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 play this counter attacking thing, yeah. This season, he's let the rails off. He said, right, I'm not even going in with a plan. One day I might play uh, counter attacking. One day I might just throw them on there and say, do whatever you want to do, freestyle on the pitch. You know what I mean? FIFA Street. You know what I mean? Go do whatever you want on the pitch. This guy, uh, this Man United team is capable of getting top four. It is. If we actually look at it, I think it's actually capable of getting top four. The only the only bad thing about this team right now is the fact that the leader, the one that's supposed to be setting the team out in a certain way, is not setting them out correctly. He's he's literally having players that go out there Sad. and Sad. do whatever I agree. they want. Put me Sad, in the I wanna I wanna move back Sad, I wanna move back to Spurs. Uh, yeah, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, cut him off because those points I were just terrible. had to I just had to say that Mo. I just had to say that but this I, man I don't said mind top four. It. This man said Speaking United about... are good enough to be in top four, Mo. Cut him off. Cut him off. No, just, I want to go back to Spurs and and, and yeah, for sorry Pablo. About that. Sorry, sorry, Mo. Sorry. Because I have we... one thing to say about this high line, though. One second. What about this high line? There's not the issue isn't playing a high line because Arsenal play with a high line, Liverpool play with a high line, City play with a high line. It's the rest defense, right? When Spurs give up the ball, they struggle sometimes at winning it back. City, when you press like counts. Four, four men chase the ball, and they get it back. Liverpool, four men chase the ball, they get it back. Arsenal, you have a Declan Rice chasing for the whole pitch. Spurs, the rest of I have the same issue with Ten Hag, too. That's why, like, his press looks stink, stinks. Your press is better than ours, but your rest defense. You have players that don't know how to win the ball back at the right time. Sometimes they're too rash, like a Basuma, for example. He's too rash. That's why he's not good. Mm. That's one of the key positions you need to address is a six. Because I think Papi Matasar has a bright future. I think Madison's a good player, but that number six, or it doesn't have to be a six. It just has to be, like... A box to box, someone that can win the ball back at a high rate. That's what you need. Your center backs, Romero, for the most part, Rash. I know Jacob's in the comments. You're gonna start talking about kuti kuti kuti. No, I, I, um, that's that's uh, once upon a time that was true, and I was one of his biggest critics. But he has toned his game down. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you are who you are. He's a, he's, a, he's a, at the end of the day, he's a rash center back. Yeah, he sometimes he'll tone it down a little bit, but when when push comes to shove, Romero sees that ball, he's sliding in and he's trying to win it, and sometimes he'll be late. That's what he is. At the, at, he's, Argent, he's an Argentinian center back. That's how they all are. It's in their blood. It's in their DNA. We've all seen them. So that's what it is. He's still a good center back. I'm not saying he's not a good center back, but they're very rash players that sometimes they don't understand the state of a game. Sometimes, like Van de Ven, for example, maybe he don't go into tight on eyes because Isak will turn you. He is that talented. You have to know your opposition. You have to know who your opponent is. And when you go up against a Gordon and an Isak and a Barnes that can spin you and then in a foot race, yeah, Van de Ven, you're rapid, but so is Isak. He's not, he's not freaking wet horse running in behind. It's Alexander Isak. He's a top striker in the Premier League. So you have to know who your opponents are and just sometimes adapt. And that's what that's the, that's the issue with Ange. And it's also the issue with some players. That's why you were right. You have to address in the window. And that's up to Daniel Levy. I know you had the past history where he doesn't address it. But the good thing I say about Spurs is they know what they need to address. You look at, the, you look at that starting 11, there's a clear weakness that needs to be addressed. There's clear profiles that need to be addressed. So that's a good thing that you have going for you. So for this season, 
I don't know what's going to happen. We have, what, seven games left? It's going to be a shootout between you and Villa. You obviously have the tougher fixture schedule, but Arsenal's a derby. You might get something out of that. City at Spurs ground have a pa- have a terrible pass. Or go like that. You still you've only scored one goal in like five years, bro. It's still a terrible pass. No, I agree with you. I'm saying oh, don't talk big about that game. I'm 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 stressed about. Oh, that you're game. doing underdog gimmick again? Is that what we're doing? We're doing the underdog. You, you just been telling me I don't I don't nah, play well. Bro. I'm allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. You support big Manchester City. You're meant to be sitting at the head of the table. You're the, the treble winners. I have you I have not chess. scored there. Wow. I have not scored there. Not wow. one. Wow. Wow. I've never seen a trouble with this team. I've no, never seen a trouble with this team because I'm chess, in the underdogs, bro. What sense does this make at all? I've never scored there, Saad. Never. You have. You have now. You can't use that anymore. You have scored. I'm there. not you, in the league. Not in the league. Not in the league. I hate you. You guys, you guys are the guys, biggest gaslighters of all time. Guys, just wait. Alejandro Garnacho yeah, re- retweeted. I saw this. Do you see this? Mm-hmm. What did he retweet? I'm not going to speak. I don't want. I really don't want to speak on it because I might get. I might say something. I, I don't want to. Alejandro say. Garnacho retweeted Mark Goldbridge blaming Ten Hag for his subbing. Oh, that's a, that guy's a clown. Oh my God! What has he? What is happening? Yeah, no, nah, he's, he's bro. You guys in the, the chat, team. you guys just realize. Garnacho needs to leave that club ASAP. Oh my God. Here we go. ASAP. Let me, let me. Uh, oh, here we go. So now you're blaming the club for this. He's blaming. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying the player needs to leave oh, the okay. club. You don't do this. The player needs to go. I agree. Oh my God. This is ridiculous. I'm not going to speak on the guy that he. Who's he literally said, Tin Hog suddenly blaming Garnacho in the post match press conference. Not a good look. Throwing a 19 years old under the bus who has actually delivered for you this season. But then again, it's clearly. Scared of upsetting the bigger earners, and he said Garnacho, and he retweeted Garnacho has been one of our best players this season. Poor first half. Crazy. This is crazy for a player to retweet a fan channel tweet calling out his manager. I have never seen this before. Never. This Garnacho guy is twisted, bro. I have, what, one, issue. I have he, one issue. Who, I have who? one issue with Garnacho. I have one issue with Garnacho. One, issue. one issue? No, no. This no, but this way, the, <laughs> one, no, like one specific issue. Like it's something that I praise him for in terms of his mentality, right? He thinks that he's the best player on the pitch. He has a, he has an ego, right? But when it comes to an ego, sometimes there, there's that's the fragile fragility of an ego. It sometimes can go a little bit too far left. He liked it. Of, Apparently, he liked it. He didn't. He, he liked. They didn't retweet it. But no, even he, like it's a retweet. It's the same, bro. It's the same. Yeah, it is. It, it is the same. It's on your same. account. When it shows in your account that you like this tweet. Crazy. I'm not Ten Hag. By the way, Ten Hag. Ten Hag but the players can think that Ten Thank Hag you, has Staffy, a lot of wrong. Thank you, Staffy. He corrected me. But it is like, bro. There's certain things that well, on your social media you don't like. And Garnacho, bro. No disrespect to Garnacho, but bro, you're a young. You're a young kid. You're 19 years old. You do not have the right to be going on social media and liking posts from. First of all, a toxic content creator that they're, they're, that has caused electricity within Manchester United Football Club. Not just the fans. Forget about the fans. Just within the football club, you cannot be doing that. You're, his brother does the same thing. His brother be tweeting. He's a sixteen. His brother's a sixteen-year-old kid that be tweeting recklessly too, bro. You have to be able to control mm. yourself. And that's how it is, bro. Because the United, because you not, you have to realize that at the club you're at. You're not at a Granada. You're not at a Bravo Vallecano. But you're not at some little club that it does, there's no media attention. You are at the media, mm. the biggest club if in the world. Manager, when it comes to what media. would you do? First of all, I've been here for a long. I would, I would bench him for the rest of the season when it comes to that, bro. You they don't, you down, don't. I, in my opinion, he goes down to the youth team again. Until yeah, bro. Because yeah, you know what? You yeah. know what? You know I have an issue because now I have to be fair. I don't know if staff is in the comments because Sancho did the same thing. Sancho obviously mm-hmm. tweeted about it, but he didn't. But obviously, likes the different stuff. But he, you, the the Garnacho has definitely has clearly disrespected his coach's opinion and his coach's decision. You may disagree with it, but we should disagree with it. Go, you were in the locker room with him. You're in the same locker room with him. You're on the same bus with him on the way back to Manchester. Talk it with him. Do not go on Twitter and the first thing you do is go like a tweet that that uh, backs you up. First of all, that's conceded. That's the first thing. That's conceded. That's that's self conceded. Bro, I don't know. I don't know who you think you are. I know your idols, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Cristiano Ronaldo has this ego about him that he's the best ever. But earned. Ronaldo has well had, earned. It's earned. It's earned. He gets credit in the bank. He he even when he criticized Ten Hag, right, and he called him out in an interview. In some in some way, I disagree with it. But at the end of the day, you also succeed. You achieved way more at Man United than Ten Hag has ever done. You won me a Champions League. You won a Ballon d'Or here. He's one of the two greatest players ever, in my opinion. So he's earned the right to be 
critical of managers and stuff like that. You are a kid. Ten Hag has given you a pathway into football, by the way. He has made you a starter that has started you 32 games in a row, by the way. Garnacho has started 32 games in a row at the age of 19. Do you know many other 19-year-olds that have started 32 games in a row at Manchester United Football Club, at a big club like that? It is a rarity. It is a privilege to wear the jersey. And if you, bro, then at the end of the day, whether you disagree, whether you like Ten Hag or not, he, as of this moment, he is the manager of Man United. So his decision stands. You may like it or you may not like it, but discuss it with him. Do not go on that toxic app and the first thing you do is like. For me, that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful to the badge. That's disrespectful to your superior. And that is a bad, that is bad, bro. That's bad management. And the same punishment that Sancho got, Garnacho deserves 100%. And Greg, yeah. Greg, I, I got to say I this. Agree. I want to move on to Man City after this. Yeah. Go ahead, Dad. I, I, I just wanted to say I, com I completely agree. Listen, um, no matter what we're saying about Ten Hag and that, bro, we're fans. You are an employee of the club, and that is your money. That's like that's like me going out and tweeting and acting my. Let's say my my company is is like very well known on social media. It's a big social media platform. Like let's say for instance, I work for Twitter. And I come out and say Elon Musk is a bozo and he doesn't know what he's doing when he's hiring all these people. Yeah, what are you, what are you doing? What is this guy doing, bro? And I don't know what's going on, man. Honestly, right now, Manchester United, I feel like some of the players need to get a real like reality check on where they are because the skill that you that you have is not matching the ego that you have. It's not the the, the, the things are not going hand in hand. Do you know what I mean? So I think yeah. you need to relax. You know what I'm looking at, Sad? I'm, I'm, we'll move on, no, Mo. I know you got to move on. Yeah. But I'm looking at to see how this fan base moves. If this fan base are like going to be split again, some agreeing with Ganacho and some agreeing with Ten Hag, that's a problem. Every, every fan should be on board with you don't do this to your manager or your club. You keep your lips zipped. You keep yeah. your socials quiet. But let's see, how, let's see yeah. what happens. Griggs is going to go now. Thank you, Griggs. He's going to join Staffy TV for yeah, Man United. Therapy. Yeah. appreciate you, Griggs. We're talking about Man City, guys. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Yeah, Griggs, you don't want to hear this. Griggs, you don't want to hear yeah. about yeah, Doku, yeah, hi. Say hi. Yeah, get out of here, man. <laughs> anyway, Manchester City, top of the league. Sending a clear message. Um, rotating heavily, Manchester City, and still top of the league. Sending a clear message, as we said. How do you... You're watching the game. You're looking at Doku. People said, oh, baby, do, ga, ga, Barbie doll. Gabardio. Mm -hmm. Another fantastic, magnificent goal. Gabardio is turning into a, a weapon going forward. Like this match, City was an emphatic win. 100%. It was. It was. Mo. <clears throat> I played midweek. I played, I played midweek against Real Madrid. 14 UCLs. I played in an atmosphere that, that, you know, they got a retractable roof, Mo. You know, they could open and close their roof. They, they closed their roof to intensify the crowd. All of them wearing white. All, the, all of them wearing white. And you know what? Manchester City came to town. Not Barcelona. Not Atletico Madrid. Nice. Manchester City came to town. Record attendance. I had to do that midweek. I had to play, and I played that game without some key players. I wasn't sure what Pep was going to do today. I wasn't sure what kind of rotation we were going to see because I knew we had to get this win. We had to keep the pressure or apply as much pressure as we could with an Arsenal and Liverpool that play on Sunday. Now, maybe Saad might, Saad might, not, might not be one of these frauds that want to talk about Doku. Saad might not be one of the frauds that wanted to talk about Gavardio. But listen... I'm one of those frauds. Oh, you are. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one I of knew those it. Frauds, now, Gavardio, worth every penny. Doku, year one. Wow. Criticize him if you want. Wow. Criticize him if you want. But we saw him today. You know what? Some, some people are good at barbecuing. Don't ask them to go in the kitchen. They can't cook. Some people can microwave. Don't ask them to go in the stove. They can't do nothing. Doku was on the left-hand side. Doku was on the right-hand side. He was cooking all day long. What you what you want you want you want barbecue? You want stir fry? Uh, he, he did everything. He was the, you know what? He was cooking and baking at the same time. That's how nice he was today. Now, I just need him to continue to improve, learn the system, get the instruction from Pep. He's gonna be good. He's gonna be more consistent. And if you want to criticize him, go ahead, take your shots. But you're gonna be the ones with egg on your face. Gavardio, 
my man's scoring for fun now. My man's like, you, you need me to add some goals to my game. I'm normally a center back. I'm playing left back. You need me to score as well. I'm a, I'll do that for you as well. He took the confidence from playing at the Bernabeu and then brought it back to the Etihad because he scored another goal for us. And he scored it on his weak foot that looked like a strong foot. He's looking so good. Now, I need players healthy, and Pep knew this. The rotation was epic. No Bernardo. No Foden. No Grealish. And more importantly, the man that actually came out and said, listen, I need a break. I need a rest. I've been playing too much. They keep comparing me to, to Busquets and all of the greats. I need a rest. Rodri was rested today. And, and he needs to be rested. Sorry, that's my phone. He needed to be rested because I'm about to play on Wednesday. I'm about to play Wednesday against Real Madrid. 14 UCL winners. They're coming to my house. I need to make sure that everybody possible that can play in that game play because I need to win it. And 5-1, completely unexpected, Mo. Completely unexpected. I was uh, like, yeah, it's Luton. Give it a rest. Be quiet. Let me speak. I can't even see your face right now. Listen, I expected 2-1, 3-1. Let me get a two-goal differential. Let me chip away at that, at that goal differential if I can. As soon as Holland deflected a goal off a defender's face and it went in, I was like, ooh, this might be my day. This might be my day. Something like that's going in? Oh, this is looking good. Now, we held them to no shots on target, no shots taken in that first half. They set up. Luton Town set up like Arsenal did coming to my house. They respected my offense. They're like, listen, we're going to defend for our lives. We'll leave here with a draw if we can. They left there with no shots taken on target. It was ridiculous. Actually, no shots taken, period. Now, this 5-1 bonus, because we scored those last two goals pretty late. But when we got a score like Holland deflecting goals off defenders' faces, when we got a, oh. a score like Holland that's able to take PKs, and pretty much when he's standing atop of that ball and he's about to strike, you're like, yeah, this is going in. It's it's just it's confidence. It's confidence all throughout the club. Now, I think we put a little marker down to say, listen, we're not going anywhere. We've won three in a row for a reason. We've won three in a row for a reason. So, hey, respect us. We're now top of the league. Game's got to be played by Liverpool and Arsenal. But we saw how Liverpool have faltered as of late. They not they faltered versus United. <laughs> they lost versus Atalanta. We'll see how they respond. Arsenal, I expect Arsenal to win. Arsenal... Oh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I fuck. Please speak. What's this? What are we listening to? These are supposed to be trouble winners. This guy's making it a, a dramatical mad thing, bro. Like, is it, bro, you're Can you be closer much... to the mic a little bit, Sam, at much... least? Okay, here you go. Let me let me get my phone right up here, yeah? If the camera catches me, well, like, halas. A hundred pound, fine. Easy. Um, But listen, this guy's making it way too dram dramatic, bro. It's Luton at home. Ah, uh, maybe. Let's, uh, let's have some self-respect and let's have some shame, bro. And self-awareness as to what team you are, bro. You are uh, treble winners, are you not? You're treble I'm winners. I'm treble winners, yeah. I'm treble winners. So you're We're... supposed you're supposed to be clearing this team out. I, I bro, I didn't I didn't gas it up like this, bro. When I when they came to my house and I literally playing Reese Nelson on the right wing and this and that, bro. I just said it's fine. That's it. We 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 got over them two 0 It was a training game. What? Bang. It was a training game. You said. Why? Why, why are you talking like as if Luton is something crazy when they come to your house? Away, Luton, I could understand. But at home, Luton shouldn't Sad. have a problem for you at Sad. all. Sad. This, this is where you and I have a problem because you arguably have the best form in the league. You have been top of the league for a very long time. You have been scoring for fun. You had Luton at your house and were only able to score two goals. So when I say I went into this game, heavy rotation because I played against Real Madrid, Difficult. You don't know anything about that right now. You're just back okay, in the Champions I, League. I played Bayern, BB. You may want to say whatever you want to say. Bayern is still a difficult team, bro. So please, let's relax. Okay, I, okay, but there's a difference between Bayern six UCLs and Real Madrid fourteen. All right, so oh, let's wow. let's respect the difference. Okay, now I'm play. Yeah. I played that game. I played that game on Tuesday. I got heavy rotation. I saw you only able to score two goals versus them. So when I said I went to, into this game with heavy rotation, expecting to maybe get a two-goal advantage, and very happy to have a 5-1 leaving there, that's what it is. I respect your club. 
I respect how you you were scoring for fun. You only scored two. So this is all I'm saying. I'm very happy with the result. 5-1. I chip away at that goal differential because Arsenal were running away with it. Let me pull that back a little bit. We'll see what Arsenal do in their game because obviously they're going to play as well. Listen, I think the pressure is on Liverpool. I think the pressure is on Arsenal because they have to respond. They can't draw points. But they also they also have to think about their Champions League and the, their Europa. So we'll see. We'll see how Arteta does, whether he has a lot of rotation or not. But this is a great marker. I, put a, I drew a, a line in the sand and said, City aren't going anywhere. Three peak trouble winners, five and six for a reason. Let's see how Arsenal and Liverpool respond. Okay, uh, uh, listen, I was, I, I was, I was, comp listen, I, I'm going to be real. Um, it's definitely something that I'm worried at, and hopefully we can keep on going and, and making sure that we at least keep a 10 goal difference, a plus 10 over City. We need to do that, because City are scoring for fun at the moment. So that's definitely something that I'm looking at as an Arsenal fan, I'll be real. Because we know City, and I know City, they can score for fun. They can score for fun. Whatever Vater's trying to say, he's happy. I appreciate it. Okay, fair enough. But I know City, it's easy for them to score these types of goals. Bang. Quick. Four nils, five nils. I've seen them for the last three seasons. Yeah, we'll just roll out a, a span of like five games where we just score 4-1, 5 nil, bang, done. And on to the next So I expected this from City to be honest But even this season The only thing I expected for them In regards to for the goal difference to be hit Is for them to concede a few more goals That's the only thing I expected Them scoring goals is fine They've been doing that They have been doing that But yeah listen I, I think I think Doku had a very good game uh, So did um, Wait 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 So you did think? Guardiola no, 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 no. Don't use the word think. You know he had a very good game. Oh, uh, brother, please. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I've been, I've been way too much for one cameo, bro. Since Bournemouth last time, what did he do, bro? Since Bournemouth, when he got four assists, what did he do? Nothing. This guy's coming on and getting blitzed by Ben White, bro. Left him for dust. And then Trossard on the other side. So, please, <laughs> let's have some shame. You're... Let's have some self-respect. And let's not let's not hype this guy up like as if he's something crazy, bro. Because Do Doku no, is sad. not that. He's really sad. not that. Bro. Oh my gosh! All right, go ahead. Finish what you have to say. <laughs> Finish what you have to say. No, no. But I, I, I was saying, listen. Um, I think that uh, Doku had a good game. Guardiola's had good two good games in a row now. He's had the good game against Real Madrid, and he has also had a good game today against Luton, where he's added goals to his game, which which is great. Um, for Pep Guardiola right now because he wants them to do the defensive job as well as bringing goals. He needs that when he lost uh, Cancelo on that side. Well, doesn't Cancelo Doku have more GA than Gabriel Jesus and the same GA as Gabriel Martinelli? But doesn't he have like doesn't so he eleven so or ten now? So, so, so what you're doing? So what you're doing, Mo? Because this is where Mo comes in. He drops these random facts just to just to they're, do a madness. They're yeah? accurate, so though. Is, they're this accurate. Is what, this is this is what Mo does. Yeah, Mo picks the two players. One player has had injuries and he's had um uh, in uh, uh, surgery on his knee and hasn't been playing regularly. Yeah. In Gabriel Jesus, the other player, Martinelli, I can understand he's he's not been in form. He's not been informed. So yeah. if we're comparing him to those two players, then I'm sorry, but that that bar one is so one hard. player is in the league for the, his Why first year. The other it? players have been in the league for four or five already, four or five, six. Yes. So I'm saying he hasn't had a good season. So and why are you is, killing this, the player in his rookie season? You want to bring up what what has he done since because, Bournemouth? Listen, we can do all of that stuff, but in a Pep Guardiola system, we saw Haaland come in and have a great first season. Yeah. Yeah. So and let's, he doing? let's not act like, let's not act like players come in and and and, and have bad seasons. Th there might be the odd player here and there. And, and no, Holland. No, you're not going to do that, Sad. Sad. No, person, no, 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 he... no. You're not going to do that. Holland oh. was an exception. Holland is not the standard. It's not the norm. What he did in his first year is not the norm. No player in year one has done what Holland's done. Everybody else needs time to adjust. I'm not going to let you do that and make it seem like a man breaking. Breaking a record that stood for years is something that players do coming to City. What record did he break? He broke. He, Holland broke the goal scoring record. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You forgot no, that. No, I'm, I'm not talking about Holland. I'm talking. Hold no, no. on. Nobody's Sad. Do you know Holland. that Gabriel Martinelli? 
Do you know that Gabriel Martinelli played 400 minutes than Jeremy Doku? Do you know how many games is that? No, no, I'm not talking about Martinelli. I was talking about Jesus. Martinelli Jesus. is the player who's having a bad season. Okay, Gabriel so Jesus. Gabriel him? Jesus why played the can... same. Gabriel Jesus played the same exact games, same number of games. How many minutes though? Uh, about 100 minutes less. With there's still exactly. game tomorrow, so we still a game One tomorrow. Game so less. basically, still a game tomorrow. So Sad same, like kind of same like minute. Back. Listen, you're you're comparing you're comparing them to forwards that don't score. And I'm comparing a forward to a left winger. Yeah, why? Why? What is why? I'm, I'm so confused as to why you're comparing. Them Sad. To I just forward. don't want you talking poorly why about Jeremy. Why not? Because if, if if Mo really wanted to do this, yeah, he'd compare him to to a winger like yes, you know, yeah, like Zaka. like who say it, say like it. Saka. Oh like my Saka. god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> From Saka being compared to Phil Foden, Saad went down trying to compare Saka to Doku. That's what Saad just did. Okay, Mo, hold on. Because the way he's speaking about Can I just tell the people? Can I just tell the people? Let me just tell the people. It's like as if it's Saka performance-esque. Come on, man. Can I just tell the people what he just did? Can I tell the people what he just did? Instead of Saka being compared to Foden, you literally said... No, Doku is the one should be compared to Saka, not Martinelli. I think he's better than both. He's compared to Saka. That's on another hand. Doku is compared to your second string players. The Gabriel Jesus, the Martinelli's. You know what I mean? These are the guys. Number of games the same. Saka played every single minute, like Foden. I'm not so, gonna... so Mo, that's, Never. that's fine. I am never going to compare Saka to Doku because but, no Man City fan can sit here and tell me that Doku is compared to Saka, who has way more experience. So, I doubt so it. please, Mo, they aren't what, he said, that, what you said, what you said is he's having better seasons than Gabriel Martinelli and, and Gabriel Jesus. Jesus. Yes, and Trossard. What, what and Trossard. Fan, and Trossard. Fan, Trossard. Okay, Khalas. Bro, do you do realize he got five assists in one game, yeah? And, and how many goals in one game? You done it in one game, yeah. So please, uh, other am, than that, uh, let me look at Trossard. Please, please, Trossard. Trossard has been coming in getting goals at important moments. So please, let's relax. But you're comparing it to Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Martinelli, who are players that we haven't even spoken about highly like this. We haven't, because they haven't had the best of seasons this season. I can agree to that. And I can admit that they haven't had the best of seasons. But these men are talking about Doku and 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 Gvardio, like as if they, they they've had amazing seasons worth. Everything. Why are you so salty when I'm talking Bro, about my I, game? No, no, I see it all over your face. You can't. You should have stayed off camera because I'm seeing it all over your face. <laughs> no, no, anyway. listen. Tell the truth, bro. You have to, Vader. Come on, man. Let's not be shameless. You're talking like Hamza for a second there, bro. You're trying no. to say... I'm, I'm waiting hey, shout for out to, to Professor Hamza. He gives an hey, amazing you lecture. Compare... You should pay more attention I'm, in class. I'm waiting for you to compare him to, to, to Maldini and Baresi no, next. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing all that. I'm not doing all that. All I, all I spoke was, was this game. All I spoke about were frauds that want to write off Doku and frauds that were saying that Gavardio wasn't worth anything. The, the money that was spent on him. And hey, I'm just saying, listen, if you want to have those criticisms early, if you want to dismiss the fact that he's playing left back and he's he's truly, he's more naturally in a center back role and that's why we got him, but we got him for his versatility. Pep is playing him out of position. Doku primarily was being played on that left wing, but he enjoyed and had more joy on that right wing. And when you see him over there, he's cooking the confidence is there. You guys were chirping too early. You guys took your shot at those two players in particular and didn't know on how nice they were going to be. Now, when you play on the world stage, when you play at the Champions The last two games in, with regards to Champions League, the business end on the season, sad. This is the thing. Oh, you forget. You forget last season. You guys were flying. Yeah, get off camera. You guys were flying last season yeah. until there were six, seven games left. Six, nuts. seven games left. That's when you need to play at your level. That's when you can't drop. I'm seeing Doku, I'm seeing Gavardio raise their level with six games left. Yes, I'm going to praise them. Yes, I'm going to praise them. And they applied pressure to you guys. That's all I'm saying. I'm not talking about their worldly. I'm not talking about their world class. I'm saying now that they're needed, 
and the games are so key, you're seeing their quality. That's that's it, plain and, and simple. That's, last that's last fine, question before we end, sad. The problem, the problem I had, I'm just gonna say this. Yeah. Sorry, Mo. I just wanna say this. The only problem Vita I had is worth every penny. If you said if you said they started to, if you said if you said they started to perform, and they've started to do them, uh, they started to to really get into form now. And it's looking, it's looking positive for me in the future for next season. I really think these guys could get, could go up levels and end up being a bit more consistent. Big up Jim, it, it, and be a bit more consistent. I'd accept that. But the fact that you're like, oh, Gavardiol worth every penny. Oh my God, eighty minutes worth everything, bro. Have some shame, man. Come on. He is worth anyway, every listen, penny. Listen, guys, I have to, I have to. Well, I have to I have to move on from this and I want to ask Sad one simple question. Are you worried, Sad? Worried about what? About Man City. I'm worried about Manchester City and Liverpool. I'm worried oh, about all right. three of them. Because they, yeah. they have shown this is the thing. I'm still somebody who hasn't won yet. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's always that risk that experience is gonna come on top. And City, yeah. no matter what their fans wanna to, wanna to try and say, baby, uh, underdogs uh, on, on top of underdogs and all of this, City are a behemoth, and they and they and they may have times where they're off their yeah. key and they're off their game, but bro, they bounce back, and when they bounce back, it's mad. Yeah. So, Kate, I'm, of course, I'm worried. Can Arsenal win the league in this? Tournament? Can Arsenal win the league? Yes. Yeah, of course they can. Um, I, I, I've been saying for a while that they were my favourites, but. But they've shown their little arson in the bum hole um, a little bit against Bayern Munich. So there you are. Um, sorry, Sard. I said there you are, Kate. You said there you are. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I kind of uh, studying the fixtures, looking at City today. I mean, I think it's hard to look past City. Um, I need it to be. Uh, Vata is. I, I love Vata. I, I've never streamed. Well, I might have streamed you before, but I just love. I love the way he talks, and he's made me want City to win it. So yeah, I'm cheering on City from here on in. I don't care if they cheats. I can't have Arsenal win the league under any circumstances. From yeah. from your mouth to God's ears, Kate. From your mouth to God's ears. Listen, people. Yeah. I need to do a couple of these super chats to be honest, and then. Uh, we're going to Sam stream, of course. Uh, Zer Talk, thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Habibi. Thank you so big up more on the panel. MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, FC Newcastle United. Uh, absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Kevin, Regista Kevin is saying if he wasn't telling them that he should bench them, yeah, about Manchester United. And the cat, Kelly Curiosity, saying Spurs rely on run fast and stick your foot out at every ball and create chaos, short spaces. That won't work once they start playing twice a week. Probably they'll get injured, to be honest with you, some of them. But thank you, guys. Listen, I want to thank Kate. Of course, her channel is in the description. Just to get her love Spurs in the description. Make sure you go and subscribe. Vator Games is there. And Michael Griggs is there. Stay on this stream. It will take you to Hussam's stream. I really appreciate everyone that joined us, watched us, supported us. Stay here. It will take you to Hussam. He has a panel on This Is Football. It's going to be an epic show there you know it and thank you everybody that watches make sure to like the video before you leave guys let's get to 300 likes before we go people we have 400 people here still and we're out of here people and we'll see you guys soon the football corner is in the description i'm gonna add it now <laughs> there you are mo